Now when you want to create a presentation from scratch and you're using the blank template, by default it has the first slide for you. You can see over here in the thumbnail preview, slide one, then over in the working area where you can work on that selected slide, it's known as the title slide. Why? Because, hey, there you go, click here to add a title. That's a box that you can add text to, known as a text box. So when I click in there, the cursor's flashing, you can see the outline of that title text box, and the presentation is going to be about my website. So I could do www.dreamforce.us. And then a little bit more information about the website. Why would I want to go to the website? Well, let's give them a little bit more down below by clicking here to add a subtitle or something to the effect of like, Hey, if you come to my website, there's information on how to get discounts, get downloads, newsletters, other things like for $2 a month, you can have access to all my training videos that I've ever produced and will be producing. I mean, that's quite a deal. In any case, we'll talk about that later. But for right now, when you're done, just click outside of the text box. So when you give your presentation, and this is the first slide that they see, they're like, oh, okay, this is what we're going to be talking about, a website. And the purposes of the presentation about the website is how to get discounts, downloads, and newsletters. Now, if you want to add additional text, but you don't want to add it as a subtitle or as the title, maybe down below a byline saying, hey, this presentation is by me or the author or it was created by. So to add an additional text box, let's click off. You can come up here, click on the insert tab and go over to the text group and click on text box and then move your mouse. And you can see how it goes from a pointer up here down onto the slide as a sword. It looks like a sword to me. And what that is, is that it's in drawing mode, meaning that when you click and drag, you get an outline of a box, and then when you let go, it is a box. It's a text box, and you got the cursor flashing in it, so you can just go ahead and start typing. By Kurt Kershaw. Oh, isn't that nice? And then you can click off and go, oh, I didn't mean to put that there. So that brings up a good point. If you made a mistake, you can always go over the text until you can see the eye beam. Then when you click on it, it puts the cursor right there inside the text box, and then you can, you know, delete and add text or characters. And then when you want to move the text box, because I want it from up at the top, down below the subtitle, just hover over the border of it until you can see arrows pointing in four different directions. That when you see it and you click and you hold down the left mouse button, you're in movable mode. And when you start moving, you see those dashed lines there, horizontally, then over, well, there you go, vertically. That means that that box is lining up with something else that's on the slide. But what specifically? It's lining up with the title there. Well, not exactly with the title www dot, but with the size of the box, the text box that the title is in. You want to see? You see over the left hand side, the text box here, that line? If I come up here and I click on the title, you see that line? Looks like it's just aligned exactly when I click on my byline here, the author of this presentation, that box there. And so that's what it's doing. It's helping you doing some alignments when you click and drag to say, oh, you're aligned here. Oh, you're lined over here, left-hand side of that text box. And so if the text box is not snug and tight around the text, then you can get some false, well, alignments here going, what the heck is that alignment? Where does that put me? So let's put it down here. And right, ooh, that looks pretty good. Horizontal alignment. And maybe, am I centered here? Oh, over to the left-hand side. It's not giving me the center where I want, but if I let go, you see the size of the box? That's not going to help. And especially if I click on the subtitle, then how do I get to that? Well, I can click on it, but you see how the text boxes might get in the way of each other, trying to select one. And we'll talk about layering in a later training video, how one text box or object can be layered over the next. And you may have a challenge trying to select the one because the other one's on top. In any case, it's probably best right now just to learn how to resize it until we get to a more advanced video on that. And you can resize this text box by hovering over the circles, known as the resizing handles, then when you hover over it, you'll see arrows pointing in opposite directions. When you see that, just click and drag in. Whoops. If I go too far in and down, then I want to go up and out. So just come in and down a little bit, maybe up a little bit, and let go. Oh, that's good. Click off. See, then that guy, subtitle here, he's pretty huge. Let's go ahead and hover over the bottom middle resizing handle until I can see arrows, and then click and drag that up. See how it's lined at the top of that other text box? That's how I get that orange dash line. Go up a little further. And then that one is lined up here to left-hand side. So they're both centered right with each other. 
Are these centered on the slide? Well, if I look up the top middle resizing handle and up here on the horizontal ruler, let me click off. It looks like it's aligned almost with zero there. When I click back on, then it goes back to, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's giving me the size of the entire text box, but when I click off, it's back to zero. So it looks like it's centered in the middle of the slide here. In any case, let's hover over the top middle resizing handle and click and drag and go down. And then you got the rotation handle. You're probably wondering what that's about. So when you hover over it, you get an arrow pointing in on itself that when you click on it, then you get four arrows pointing in on themselves. That allows you, holding down the left mouse button, to tilt, whoa, getting kind of seasick. And then you can do it that way, or if you hold down the shift key and you go left, it does it in about 15 degrees increments. And let's go back and let go of the mouse and let go of the shift key. So you may want to consider when it comes to resizing the length of it, if you want to be able to align it centered here. And we'll talk about how you can get more particular about aligning and using grids and guides. But for right now, let's keep it simplistic. We resize the text box. We moved a text box. Well, we added text to a new text box down below. And so the final thing that I want to show you, let me click off, is another way that you can add text to your slide. There's other ways you can do it. But as far as adding text from a document, like let me come up here and minimize this down to the taskbar so I can see my desktop. There's the current presentation that we're in, and here's some text right here in the Word document that when I double click to open it up, you can see it's about one, okay, two pages. So I can come in here and I can go ahead and click and drag and select it and copy it. Control C to copy, and we'll learn how to copy and paste, or you can come up here on the Home tab to the clipboard group and click on the Copy button, and then close out. Then come back down below on the taskbar and click on the button to restore the program, our PowerPoint. And you can come in here, up here on the Home tab in the clipboard group and click Paste. And when you paste it, it automatically adds a text box. See, I had to hover over the border of the box that when I pasted it, it automatically added it and put the text within it. Granted, the text is squished and it's got no spacing in between the lines. So if I hover over the bottom right-hand corner resizing handle, and click and drag that out. No, it's just not looking good. Let me hit enter a couple of times and well there's some space. In any case, there's the text. Copy and paste. The other way that you can do it, and then we'll call it good here to get us started, let me go ahead and click on the border of the box, hit the delete key, and that's how you can get rid of your text boxes. And speaking of which, if you do it for a slide that has it set up template wise, like your title and subtitle, that if you hover over the border of the title in this special layout here, this template, and you delete it, that text box that prompts you to add a title is still there until you click on that, the border of that, and delete that, and then you just lost your layout. It's no longer the title slide layout. I mean, you can add a text box, right, and type in text, but as far as the layout goes, it's been worked over. You have deleted it. So I'm going to come up here on the Quick Access Toolbar and hit the Undo arrow. So it undoes what I did and hit it again because it remembers two actions back. Well, it remembers a lot. You can click on the drop down arrow and it remembers a lot of actions. But in any case, I digress. Once I go back to the way I like it and I want to go back to that Word document and copy and paste all the text, you don't have to leave PowerPoint in order to get the text within that document into your slide or into your presentation on a slide. What you can do, let me click off, is come up here and click on the insert tab and then come over here to the text group and you can insert it as an object an embedded object so it's going to embed the text in basically a text box on the slide that I insert it in so let's click on it's not going to look pretty because you know you're taking a text box of all that text and putting it on top of the title but nonetheless I want to show you that if you have another blank slide how you can do it as one way of adding text to your slides from another well a word document come up here click on object and you want to create something new or you want to create it from a file well it's from a file it's on our desktop so I'll select that option and then I'll browse for it click browse and it's on my desktop so over in the navigation pane let's go to the desktop and then over in the main working area it's the poem there's no other way double click there's the address so it knows where to go to pull that in and then when I'm ready I click okie dokie 
and there it is. So I can hover over the border of that box and click and drag it over here so you can see it's very legible. It's so tiny. But we can zoom in on it, right? Use the zoom feature, click and drag to zoom in. Oh, there we go. And then how do I edit it? Well, to do that, double click really fast and it puts it in edit mode. But not like what we've seen before because you get this fuzzy border. So it's as an object and not just a regular text box. And you can see it's actually got its rulers in there in that object or that document separate from the ruler in the PowerPoint presentation. But you can still come in here, you know, make some changes, type in a lot of text, mess it up, delete, 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 click and drag to select, delete. I mean, you could just go to town. And then when you're done, click on the outside of it. It jumps around as it repositions it back into place. And there you go. And it will show up in the presentation. But like I said, that's a lot of text to be putting on one slide, especially when it's kind of small. Well, it is at 84% zoom. When you give your presentation, it'll be at 100% here. Oh, okay, that's too much. And now we can start reading it here at 142% in any case. Let's get rid of that. Let's go ahead and make sure we click on the border and then hit the delete key on the keyboard and it's gone. And then we can come back down below on the status bar and say we want to fit the slide to the current window. Because at 142%, I can't see the entire slide. So let's click on it. Fits it right back to where we were. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.